Guten Tag. Welcome to Sunday Mass with Children. Hi, I'm David. Today we celebrate the eighth Sunday in ordinary time. Um, Grace, what are you doing? Oh, um, I was just thinking over some things about myself. Thinking about yourself? Yeah. Ah, self-reflecting. That's our theme, the one big idea for today. Yes, but let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for understanding that we can get very busy with school and friends. When we stop running around and think about it deeply, we realise just how much you love us and care for us. Help us to always find precious space and time to pray and to self-reflect, so that we can grow ever closer to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. He's higher than a skyscraper. He's deeper than a submarine. He's wide. Thank you for sharing your amazing artwork with us week after week on Little Faith Steps. The entries from our local and international friends are colourful and encouraging. We are always inspired by your sharing and beautiful artwork. Keep them coming.
Today's theme is self-reflection. Self-reflection is like holding a mirror up to yourself, but you have to look past your face and body and into the mind and into the heart. Yes, it's looking deeply into what you've experienced, how you behave and how you feel. It's a way to understand yourself better. Do you know that even someone as wise as King David didn't know how to self-reflect when he prayed? That's okay. David asked God to help him. Singing can also be a way to start self-reflecting. Let's combine the two. Come and sing along with us. Search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. See if there be some wicked way in me. Cleanse me from every sin and set me Joy! Joy! Is that you? <laughs> oh, I'm not Joy. I'm Spooky Joy. Joy, why are you going through all my things? You didn't even ask for my permission. I was just walking past your room. It was so messy. Anyways, what's all this stuff? I know it's messy, but that's because I had a long day of swimming training. I haven't had the energy to clean up yet. So messy, Jerry. I came up. We were sorry for you. Messy, 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 Jerry. Is he messy? Yes, he's very. <sighs> Joy, I'm really tired. Could you leave so I can rest? Oh, okay. <laughs> Parable by Jesus, the splinter in your eye. Jesus told a parable to his disciples. He started by saying, Can one blind man guide another blind man? Surely both will fall into a hole. Then Jesus went on to tell them that if a person sees a little sharp piece of wood in someone's eye, he doesn't have to worry about taking it out for him. Jesus says the person should first see clearly enough so that he can take the big wooden plank out of his own eye. But Jesus wasn't really talking about wood in our eyes. You see, what he meant was that we should self-reflect so we can see our own sins and faults first, instead of judging someone and trying to correct their sins instead. Jesus ended the long parable by saying, A good man draws what is good from the store of goodness in his heart. Bad man draws what is bad from the store of badness. For a man's words flow out of what fills his heart. Hey, Jerry! Yes, Joy? I got a surprise for you, okay? Come on, let's go. Come. No? Come on, let's go. Where, where, where are you bringing me to? Let's see. Ta da! Wow. You did this? Yeah, I can't the room. It's not a big deal anyways. Thanks, but what made you do that? Well, I felt bad for making fun of you yesterday. It wasn't nice. I'm sure I do things all the time that might bother you. But you don't do that to me. And I judged you for being messy without thinking about why your room was in a mess. You've been training so hard for your swimming competition. It must be difficult to clean your room when you get home and you're really tired. Yeah, it can be pretty difficult. And then I thought about myself and how I had some free time today. So why not help you out a bit? Oh, uh, thanks Joy. And don't worry, I'm not upset about yesterday. It was a pretty good song. Messy, 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 Jerry. Okay, okay, messy, okay, okay. Yes, you, don't, you don't have to do this now. Messy, 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 Jerry. Remember the song we sang just now? We want to self-reflect when we pray so that God can help us see ourselves and our hearts more clearly. Even when we become very busy with school, family and friends, we should always find a little space and time to spend with God. Even 10 minutes would be great. You can have a conversation with God or you can just sit there quietly, like with a good friend. That way you can listen to what He wants to say to you in the quiet of your heart. Sometimes you might feel uncomfortable about something as you reflect. Just ask God to show you why.
when we do that, we grow closer to God because we are always trying to be more and more like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can you believe that Lent is just around the corner? But before that, we have Ash Wednesday. It takes place 46 days before Easter Sunday. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of Lent, a season of fasting and prayer. Catholics attending Mass on this day will have their foreheads marked with ashes. This comes from the ancient Jewish tradition of penance and fasting, where we wear ashes on our heads. The ashes symbolize the dust from which God made us. You will hear the priest saying this to you as he makes the form of a cross with the ashes. Turn away from sin and be faithful to the gospel. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you will return. Repent and believe in the good news. The ashes are a sign of our repentance. As we receive the ashes with a sense of sorrow for all our flaws, our weaknesses, we have a sense of hope. That's because Ash Wednesday is a special day to also remember that we are God's creation, His beloved sons and daughters. You are here
for this week's activities, go to our Facebook page, Little Faith Steps. Like our page and share your works in the comments section with us. We can't wait to see them. Mars is about to start, so it's time to set up your altar table, take a moment to get these items, and see you in a while. Hey, don't forget to take a photo and post it on Facebook or Instagram or any social media with the hashtag Catholic Mars at Home. Let us now listen to what Auntie Estera has to share with us in one Mass minute. Lent begins this Wednesday. If you attend Mass, you'll notice several things right away which remind us that Lent is a solemn time. You'll see Father in a colour he wore just seven weeks ago, purple. This time though, we are preparing for Jesus' death and resurrection. You'll notice we don't sing the Alleluia anymore. But the most special thing about Mass is that Father blesses ash and puts it on our heads to remind us to turn away from bad words and deeds. This special ash comes from the leaves we used for last year's Palm Sunday. During Jesus' grand entrance into Jerusalem, the Jews put palm branches under his donkey's feet to show respect. They thought he'd come to be their great king. But when they realised he was not the earthly king they wanted, they shouted for him to be crucified. These ashes remind us that although we know Jesus is our king, we sometimes turn against him too. Lent is our season of coming home to Christ. Thank you, Auntie Estella. Let us now settle down, sit in front of your altar table, take a moment to be silent and prepare for Holy Mass. Welcome, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to the Holy Mass with children. Thank you for joining us to sing songs of praise and learn more about the value of self-reflection. There's nothing like giving God our hearts and our voices to worship Him as our loving Father. Let us now worship the Lord together on the 8th Sunday in Ordinary Time, 27 February 2022. We offer up this Mass for priests, religious, and all called to the consecrated life that they may continue to be guided by the Holy Spirit in service of God and His Church. Join us in singing the processional hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So welcome to today's Eucharist. And in the scripture readings today, Jesus is asking us to think carefully and to reflect about how we speak. How we speak to people. Do we speak to them with love? or not. And we are asked to pray about this and to reflect on this today. So we call to mind God's mercy and we ask His forgiveness 
because he is always a God who is full of mercy, compassion, and redemption. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the cause of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. In a shaken sea, the rubbish is left behind. So too, the defects of a man appear in his talk. The kiln tests the work of the potter. The test of a man is in his conversation. The orchard where a tree grows is judged on the quality of its fruit. Similarly, 
a man's words betray what he feels. Do not praise a man before he has spoken, since this is the test of men. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Letter of Saint Paul to the Corinthians. When this perishable nature has put on imperishability, and when this mortal nature has put on immortality, then the words of Scripture will come true. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Now the sting of death is sin and sin gets its power from the law. So let us thank God for giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Never give in then, my dear brothers. Never admit defeat. Keep on walking at the Lord's work always, knowing that in the Lord you cannot be labouring in vain. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told a parable to his disciples. Can one blind man guide another? Surely both will fall into a pit. The disciple is not superior to his teacher. The fully trained disciple will always be like his teacher. Why do you observe the splinter in your brother's eye and never notice the plank in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take out the splinter that is in your eye when you cannot see the plank in your own? 
Hypocrite, take out the plank out of your own eye first, and then you will see clearly enough to take out the splinter that is in your brother's eye. There is no sound tree that produces rotten fruit, nor again a rotten tree that produces sound fruit. For every tree can be told by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorns, nor gather grapes from brambles. A good man draws what is good fruit from the store of goodness in his heart. A bad man draws what is bad from the store of badness. For a man's words flow out of what fills his heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. So have your parents ever told you not to talk so much? Maybe you have. Have you been scolded because you answered back or argued with them when they asked you to do something? I think all of us have been scolded for doing something like that before, right? When I was young, even though I was a very quiet boy, sometimes I still got scolded for answering back or arguing with my parents. When I was in school, one of the brothers in the school uh, shared this saying with us, and I remember it until today. God made us with two ears and one mouth, so we should... Listen twice as much as we speak. I really like that very much. So today, Jesus asks us to reflect on how we speak. And how do you speak? How do you speak to your friends, your siblings, to your parents, to your teachers? When you want something, uh, do you say please? And after you have got it, do you say thank you? When you speak to your friends, do you say kind things to them? Or do you call them names and insult them or hurt their feelings so that other people might laugh at them? Jesus talks about us seeing the splinter in somebody's eye without noticing the plank in our own eye. So sometimes do we judge or criticize other people when they make mistakes, but we never pay any attention to the mistakes that we make ourselves. And of course, we now have social media. You can go on Twitter or Instagram or TikTok and say anything that you want and say anything about anybody. So this is what Jesus wants to tell us. What comes out of our mouth is really what is in our hearts. If there is goodness in our hearts, if there is love in our hearts, then our words will be loving and encouraging. If there is badness in our hearts, if our hearts are full of anger or jealousy, then our words will be sarcastic, rude, and hurtful. Now, Jesus is saying that he's not telling us that we should never speak. He's simply asking us to reflect on when we speak and how we speak. Because actually, Jesus talks a lot. And the Gospels are full of Jesus talking a lot. He taught large groups of people for a long time. And then he met with many people and talked to them. And he spoke a lot to his disciples, teaching them and guiding them. At times, Jesus was very outspoken. And he challenged some of the leaders of the society, especially when they did wrong things or ill-treated those who were different. 
But whenever Jesus spoke, even if his words were tough, it was from the goodness of his heart. He never spoke to hurt or to insult people. He never spoke to make other people think that he was very clever. Jesus spoke out for what was right. He spoke out for those who did not have a voice. Why? Because his heart was full of goodness. Also, the Gospels tell us that Jesus spent a lot of time in silence and in prayer. He would go away by himself to pray for, for many hours. We are also told that he spent a lot of time listening to people. He would go to their homes and spend time talking to them, listening to their stories about what was happening in their lives. So Jesus, just like us, also had two ears and one mouth. And with the two ears that he had, he listened to God and he listened to other people. And he would never speak until he had listened to God and listened to others. So after listening to the Word of God today, after listening to Jesus, what can we do? Perhaps Jesus today is asking us to take just one small step in our lives. He's simply saying to us, the next time before you speak, just pause, reflect, and pray. Is what I'm going to say coming from the goodness in my heart? Is it a word of love and encouragement to the person I'm going to speak to? If it is, then very good, go ahead. But if we pause and we reflect that these words come from a bad place in our hearts, then maybe we can pause and refrain from speaking. And later on, the Holy Spirit will continue to work with us, to change us, to help us to grow. We pray that we will follow the example of Jesus, always and only to speak what comes from the goodness within ourselves. So let us renew our faith as we pray the Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, you have sent Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. You have defeated death's sting and sent the word of light into our world of darkness to enlighten us, to transform us, to heal and to save us. With grateful hearts and trust, we bring our needs to you. 
Our response is, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our religious leaders, Pope Francis, Archbishop William Goh, all priests and clergy, and those who lead us and guide us in our faith, that they may always stay true to their calling and be fruitful to their work of leading the faithful and drawing all they need to embrace the gospel message. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for active participation and the grace of openness towards one another so that the synodal process, as initiated by Pope Francis, may renew our commitment to walk with one another towards the vision of God for His Church in Singapore. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For leaders of every nation, that they will enact just laws and promote a culture that fosters virtues and abides in truth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the Church, that the Lord will bless His people and make them a light for the nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those suffering the injustice of racism, that all humanity may unite as one in working for harmony, justice, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have went before us, we pray that our faithful departed may be raised to new life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us take a moment for our personal intentions and the intentions of our family and friends who have asked for our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our loving Father, remove the plank in our eyes and help us to see the goodness that surrounds us. Open our eyes that we may see with our hearts the wonders of our fellow brothers and sisters. Restore us all in your image, who is Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to our boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall 
might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of communion together with Pope Francis, Bishop William, and with all the faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. We pray now together in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that You should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. So our Lord Jesus Christ, we desire very much to be present and to receive you in this bread and wine in a physical way. However, we cannot be here, but we know that you are present in our lives and in our hearts, and we ask you to come into us and be with us. We invite all those watching to make an act of spiritual communion with a spirit of gratefulness, thanking God for His infinite love and sacrifice. With humble and contrite hearts, let us express our desire to invite Jesus into our souls. My Jesus, I believe that You are present in the most holy sacrament. I love You above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. In 2021, we celebrated 200 years of Catholicism in Singapore. Together, as one community and one church, we continue to bring the light of Christ to others. Thanks to our founding fathers, these 200 years, uh, all their efforts uh, led us to get to know Christ. With this festival, I think it has actually, you know, bring up that I want to renew back my relationship with God, going closer to God and with this, all these sacraments and exhibitions, it really makes me reflect a lot. It was a wake up call for me that God is with us. In spite of this COVID period, we must be prepared for His coming. Come closer to Jesus. Before we can shine in the world, we need to be ignited with the joy the peace and the love of Christ so that we can truly manifest this joy in our lives. Last night I didn't really believe in God, but I feel like uh, while being in church, I like start to, to believe in God like a lot. So all these different talks and whatnot actually really helped us to renew our faith, especially the most recent talks in this, like this current cosmic of event. I think it helps us to see that, you know, how faith can be applied in like different aspects of our life. I think it's really a blessing to be able to be in church for adoration and to receive the sacrament of reconciliation, especially after this period of time during the pandemic. It's 
really a blessing, a journey of grace itself. At the end of the day, the church can grow only when the people are spiritually ready. And it is the hundreds and thousands of people who are helping in the background. We must never forget them because without everybody chipping in a bit of their time, it would be impossible to celebrate all these events. To appreciate all the collective efforts over many lifetimes and um, helps me to really think about the future evangelization in our generation. About time for me to, to serve people, to be the light around the people around us, and that Catholicism in Singapore will go beyond just the years. And this is what we want to project into the future to see what actually spurs me, what actually motivates me to make the message of Christ ring through to the next generations, for generations to come. My dear brothers and sisters, I invite all of you to continue to ignite and shine and have a greater hope for a renewal of our faith to be the sword of the earth and the light of the world, going out of ourselves to spread the good news. As we move forward, let us continue to ignite and shine with the light of Christ.